Hello and welcome back to another session of your computer class. In today's session, we will be learning about PowerPoint 2010. In this chapter, we will understand how to get started with PowerPoint 2010. We will learn to start PowerPoint 2010 application in simple steps. And to access PowerPoint 2010, you must have Microsoft Office 2010 installed in your PCs. With PowerPoint, we can make presentations using slides comprised of text, images, movies, graphics, and sound. PowerPoint is an excellent resource for those who need to convey information via presentations. Steps to start PowerPoint Click the Start button. Click All Programs option from the menu. Search for Microsoft Office from the submenu and click it. Next, search for Microsoft PowerPoint 2010 from the submenu and click it. You can have a look at the steps over here. First, we have clicked on the Start button. Second, we will be selecting All Programs option. Then, we will select Microsoft Office. And then, we will select Microsoft PowerPoint. After that, this is an interface which you will see when you follow those four steps. So, let us first discuss what we see when we open PowerPoint 2010. At the top, we find the title bar. On the left of the title bar, we have quick access toolbar. By default, this toolbar has the save, undo and redo buttons. We can add or remove buttons to this toolbar. In the middle of the title bar, we find the name of our file and the name of the application. On the right hand of the title bar, we have the minimize, maximize and close buttons. Under the title bar, we have ribbon. In the ribbon, we find all the task buttons which help us to perform all the tasks in PowerPoint. Now, what is new in 2010 version of PowerPoint is that we can customize the ribbon. This was not available in 2007 version. More on customizing the ribbon and the quick access toolbar we will learn in the next chapter. Now, in this interface you can see us now. When we explore PowerPoint, we have a file tab at the tab top. This tab opens the backstage view which basically allows you to manage the file and settings in PowerPoint. You can save presentations, open existing ones and create new presentations based on blank or predefined templates. The other file related operations can also be executed from this view. Next, we will discuss the ribbon again. The ribbon contains three components, tabs, groups and commands. What are tabs? They appear across the top of the ribbon and contain groups of related commands. Example, home, insert and page layout. These are all ribbon tabs. Next is groups. They organize related groups, related commands under each group. And each group name appears below the group on the ribbon. For example, a group of commands related to fonts or a group of commands related to alignment. The name is given at the bottom, the font group. Next is commands. Command appears within each group as mentioned above. That means whether we have to uh, make the text bold, whether we have to italicize the text. So, it comes under the font group. These commands comes under the font group. 
Next is title bar. As we have discussed earlier also, this is the top section of the window and it shows the name of the file followed by the name of the program. Next is the slide area. This is the area where the actual slide is created and edited. Can you see this blank white page sort of thing at the uh, center of the screen? This is your slide. You can add, edit and delete text, images, shapes and any other multimedia items in this section. Then we have help option. Uh, the help icon can be used to get PowerPoint related help anytime you need. Clicking on the question mark opens the PowerPoint help window where you have a list of commands or common topics to browse from. You can also search for specific topics from the search bar at the top. Then we have zoom sessions at the bottom. The zoom control lets you zoom in for a closer look at your text. The zoom control consists of a slider that you can slide left or right to zoom in or out. You can click on the minus and plus buttons to increase or decrease the zoom factor. The maximum zoom supported by PowerPoint is 400% and the 100% is indicated by the mark in the middle. Next, we'll discuss about slide views. The group of four buttons located to the left of the zoom control near the bottom of the screen lets you switch between PowerPoint views. Now, there are normal layout view and this displays page in normal view with the slide on the right and a list of thumbnails to the left. This interface which we are seeing at the screen right now is a normal layout view. This view allows you to edit individual slides and also rearrange them. Then we have slide sorter view and it displays slides as a matrix. This view only allows you to rearrange the slides but you cannot edit any content of any slide. Then we have reading view. This view uh, is like a slideshow with access to the windows taskbar in case you need to switch windows. Uh, however, like the slideshow you cannot edit in anything in this view. Then we have notes section. This section allows you to add notes for the presentation and we can use these notes uh, for our reference and they, these notes will not be displayed on the screen when you start a slideshow. They are just for quick reference for the presenter. Then we have quick access toolbar. This toolbar is located just under the ribbon. And it offers a convenient place to group the most commonly used commands in PowerPoint. You can even customize this toolbar uh, as per your need. Then we have slide tab. This section is available only in normal view and it displays the slides in sequence as you can see on the left hand side. You can add, delete or reorder slides from this section. We can even duplicate the slide in this section. Uh, now, uh, we will be discussing about how to format the text and how to insert another slide or add another slide in a PowerPoint in a next session. Thank you.